Remember that iconic scene in The Martian where Mark Watney, stranded on the Red Planet, relies on his makeshift habitat to shield himself from Mars's bone-chilling environment? His little bubble of warmth and oxygen kept him safe, while the planet outside was colder than a polar vortex on steroids. Now, imagine you're in his boots or spacesuit. What would you do to escape that relentless freeze if you didn't have a fancy habitat to protect you? Stick around, because later in this video, we're going to dive into some out-of-this-world ideas scientists are cooking up to warm Mars and make it a little less like a deep freezer and a bit more like, well, somewhere you might actually want to visit. So let's dive into the wacky world of Martian makeovers. Imagine Mars, our cold and dusty neighbor, sitting there minding its own business when a group of scientists decides it's time for a cosmic glow-up. The latest gossip from the universe's beauty salon, aka Science Advances, spills the beans on a bold new plan injecting tiny particles into Mars's atmosphere to give it a toasty 10 degrees C boost. Yep, you heard that right Mars is getting a planetary spa day, and it might just be hot enough to bring back liquid water. But hold on, don't pack your spacesuit just yet. This grand scheme requires about 2 million tons of special particles per year, which sounds like a lot until you realize these could be whipped up from Martian dust, no less. Talk about a DIY project. Colin McKins, a space engineer who's apparently the Simon Cowell of space ideas, chimed in with, well, it's not every day you hear a terraforming plan that actually sounds fresh he's got a point Mars might not be as hopelessly uninhabitable as we thought. It's like finding out your drab, fixer upper house is actually a charming, rustic cottage in disguise if you just fix the roof, the plumbing, and, well, everything else. Mars? Bless its little red heart, used to have water flowing all over it, but now it's a frigid wasteland where the average temperature is a bone-chilling minus 62 degrees C. That's colder than your ex's heart. So, to make it livable, Mars needs a serious heat wave. The solution? Give it the same treatment that's been warming Earth just without all the, you know, disastrous climate change consequences. Enter the brainy crew, led by Samane Ansari, who's basically out here saying, if you can't stand the cold, put some glitter in the air. These folks figured out that you could take some iron and aluminum from Martian dust, shape it into teeny tiny rods, and then sprinkle them into the atmosphere like cosmic confetti. The result? Mars gets warmer? And we might just have a shot at making it our second home minus the need for bulky winter coats. Of course, there are a few teeny tiny catches. Mars still has no breathable air, almost no atmospheric pressure, and oh yeah, deadly ultraviolet rays from the sun, just waiting to fry anyone who steps outside. Plus, the soil might be too salty or toxic for your tomato plants. So even if we turn up the heat, Mars isn't exactly ready for human habitation just yet. It's like buying a house with no roof, walls, or plumbing, but hey, the view's nice. But don't let that stop the dreamers. Ansari and her team are already planning to whip up these magic nanorods in the lab, and see what else they can cook up. Meanwhile, their colleague Edwin Kite is over here reminding us that all this Martian terraforming talk also makes us appreciate Earth a bit more. After all, if we can figure out how to build a whole new climate somewhere else, maybe we should pay a little more attention to the one we've got here. So, in the grand tradition of sci-fi becoming science, Mars might one day go from red and desolate to a warm, cozy neighbor. Just don't forget your sunblock. Thanks for sticking around. If you enjoyed this dive into the wild possibilities of terraforming Mars, make sure to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe for more fascinating science content that's out of this world. And if you've got any burning questions or thoughts about life on Mars, drop them in the comments below we'd love to hear what you think. Oh, and be sure to ring the bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next one.